Hello there, and welcome to episode 2 of the Duplicant's Guide to Oxygen Not Included. Today we're going to go over asteroid types and asteroid traits. Welcome to Oceania. This beachside colony is more threatening than its serene start might imply. The surrounding tidal biomes are full of hostile poke shells and high temperature brines. The large quantities of water can ensure your colony's survival, but first you'll have to desalinate the water and figure out a way to get rid of its heat. Careful expansion will be necessary to not flood your base or expose duplicants to territorial poke shells. Should you conquer the heat, Oceania will reward you with extensive quantities of water, food, and everything else you need to set up a successful industry. This is Rhyme, an iceball asteroid that lost its heat to space long ago the seeping cold killing off the once thriving forest. Should you wish to remain lively yourself, a source of heat will be needed, and quickly. There will be no easy access to food, so caution should be taken when expanding the colony to prevent the loss of what little heat you can generate. Early research should focus on a way to warm up, like the space heater or liquid tepidizer. Should you survive your first days, try heading for the still active core for a long-term warming solution and enjoy the easy access to rare and valuable resources. If Ryan was too cold, then maybe Volcania will be just right. The land of volcanoes, Volcania offers a lot of excess heat around your starting biome that limits your expansion. Tidal, caustic, and magma biomes make up the majority of this world, and you'll need to search for the few cold spots left. To succeed on Volcania, early cooling solutions will be required. However, extreme temperatures provide excellent potential for steam power, and finding ways to beat the heat will be rewarded with rich deposits of valuable metals. For an even more extreme challenge, try finding a Volcania asteroid with volcano and magma channel traits. Verdante, a lush asteroid, Verdante has limited industrial resources but offers rich opportunities. With careful planning and tight management of early food and oxygen resources, Verdente should provide adaptable colonists with a welcoming home. Look for metal-depleted asteroids for an extra challenge, or metal-rich or geoactive traits to expand your opportunities even further. Early research into oxygen and farming trees will aid your chances of survival. Arborea, a greenhouse asteroid, Arborea is a rich forest with low metal availability. A pleasant starting biome presents new challenges, and biological solutions to oxygen, food, and power will need to be considered for successful colonization. Scrub your carbon dioxide with oxyferns and convert lumber to ethanol, and let the pips plant your seeds for you. Arborea presents a unique challenge with a decidedly different route to success. Just be careful to keep the pips out of your storage areas. Welcome to the Badlands. With little more than a small oasis surrounded by rocky walls, life on the Badlands was clipped short long ago. All that's left now is the husk of this dead world, and this means endless opportunity for the intrepid. Draw deep upon your inner knowledge and provide for your colony's needs, and you shall find wealth greater than even the greatest of baronies. Just remember to respect the Badlands, or you'll find your own colony clipped short as well. Challenge awaits you on Iridia. With abnormally high temperatures in your starting biome, your options are limited and survival is unlikely. Quick and careful planning will be vital to simply surviving your first days on Iridia, as food, water, and oxygen all quickly deplete. Even if you can temporarily provide those necessities, the pervasive heat will threaten to overwhelm you. Cooling systems will be critical to staying alive on Iridia and finding a good solid source of water will be your next priority. If by chance you get a stable foothold though, you will find a radio is rich in resources and provides a colony with everything it needs to reach for the stars. An oasis in the desert. Oasis presents a challenge like no other. Though your starting forest oasis might be cool, the extreme heat of the surrounding desert will quickly seep in and threaten your colony you'll need to quickly build an insulating shell if you're to survive. Extremely careful planning and an eye towards conservation of resources will be invaluable to extending the limited amount of water and oxygen you have at hand. To get more, you'll need to risk heat stroke or even death to find the resources you need. 
Additionally, the, the lack of reed fiber will make exploring intensely difficult. But if you can manage to thrive despite these challenges, Oasis offers the colony an impressive growing room and everything a dedicated critter rancher could desire. Just be careful breaking through your insulated shell, because if the heat doesn't kill you, lack of easy access to water might. To succeed on Oasis, you'll need to prioritize cooling and oxygen generation. Home Sweet Home, Terra. The default asteroid type, Terra is a paradise in waiting and provides a wide variety of resources without difficult traits to impede your progress. Allowing a wide range of playstyles, Terra is the preferred asteroid type for new colonists to figure out the ropes before moving on to more difficult assignments or to just relax and learn the intricacies of colony management. There are a number of different trait types that can modify your asteroid world. World traits can have an intense impact on the playstyle of your game. It's worth spending some time in thinking about what kind of game you want to play and pick your world traits accordingly. You can make the world very difficult, or quite a bit easier. Frozen core and large glaciers will spawn a lot of ice in your world. Frozen core will replace the magma ocean at the bottom of your world with a frozen biome, whereas large glaciers will just spawn large chunks of ice and polluted ice around your world at random. These can be particularly useful in a game where there is a lot of heat in a region such as Oasis or Volcania, and can provide a lot of water and cooling for a region. Volcanoes and magma channels provide areas with a lot of magma in them. You can use this as a thermal gradient and extract the heat and turn it into power with a steam turbine, or use it to heat an area like on Ryan. Subsurface oceans will spawn a saltwater ocean between space and the top of your world. The subsurface ocean is a salt biome and will have a large amount of poke shells, salt water, and water weeds. Irregular oil is an interesting world generation trait in that it allows oil biomes to spawn anywhere in your world. Additionally, you can have buried oil, which reduces the amount of free oil that's sitting around and requires you to use oil reservoirs and use polluted water to extract the oil from them. However, you will get more oil reservoirs on your map and will in general have more access to oil should you have the polluted water available to use. Small, medium, large, and mixed boulders spawn boulders of igneous rock and obsidian of varying sizes. These spawn in at the surrounding biome's temperature, so they can be very hot or fairly cold. It's a good source of obsidian and igneous rock for feeding your hatches. Slime molds are a nice little trait because it gives you little chunks of slime and algae in your world. You just have to be aware that depending on the temperature, slime molds will have slime lung in them, and of course slime will off-gas polluted oxygen once you mine it. Geodes are like little goodies that you can find in your world. They're characterized by an abyssalite shell with an internal obsidian ring, with something nice inside like water, natural, natural gas, and some diamond tiles. Miscalculated pod location merely changes the location of your pod when it is generated. It can be a little bit to the left, right, up, or down, rather than immediately in the center of your world. Geodormant and Geoactive change the number of geysers that will spawn randomly in your world. You will still have your fixed geyser spawns, natural gas and steam geysers, but Geodormant will reduce the total number of geyser spawns that you have, while Geoactive will increase them. Metal Poor and Metal Rich affect the amount of metal in each tile of your world. Metal Poor worlds will have smaller veins with half the normal amount of metal in them, while metal rich worlds will have larger metal veins with twice the amount of metal in them. If this video helped you, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this in the future. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheers!